Hi there everyone, my name is Dave West, I hope you're all doing well. So welcome back to a slightly different video to the norm on the channel, and today I'm checking out LumaFusion on Android. So this is finally here after months and months of waiting, and it is currently available in beta form or early access on the Google Play Store. Now, a few things I want to mention just before I start the video. Now, this is a paid app, obviously. It's £17.99, but that is a one-off payment, and once you pay it, you own this app for life, and it can be downloaded on as many different Android devices as you own, which is brilliant. There's a few notable exclusions as well in this beta stroke early access version of the app. Now, some of them are not deal breakers, to be perfectly honest, but they are notable exclusions versus the iOS version of this app. So first one of those is there is no HDR export support. So you can import a HDR video into the timeline, but it'll automatically be converted to the Rec 709 color space. Now, to be perfectly honest, that's not really a bad thing because most HDR video on smartphones is recorded in the Rec 2020 color space. And sometimes the colors can look a little bit too over punchy and vibrant. So by converting them to Rec 709, it looks a lot more natural. Once you've done that, you can export the video, but it'll only be in standard dynamic range and not high dynamic range. Now, a few other things I've noticed is that with the transitions, it's just limited to a crossfade at the moment. So there are a lot more available on iOS, uh, but for the Android version at the moment, I could only see that there is a crossfade transition for going between different tracks. The other thing is, is when you're putting titles on, whilst you can overlay a title and it looks okay, there is a very small amount of fonts available. iOS is stuffed full of loads of different fonts, but with the Android version, it is a little bit bereft and there's not many there to choose from. I'll show you all of this throughout the video, but I just wanted to let you know this at the top of the video so you know exactly what you're dealing with. Now, by and large, the actual look and feel of the app is pretty much identical to iOS, and LumaTouch have done a fantastic job of porting this over to Android, and compatibility, importantly, is really good. So this Find X5 that I'm actually recording this screen recording on now has got a Snapdragon 888 uh, chipset in it. The Pixel 7 Pro, which I've tried, which you know, has got the Tensor G2 chip, works perfectly on that. I've even gone and tried it on my OnePlus 7 Pro, so that's got an old Snapdragon 855 chipset, and it runs absolutely fine on there as well. Now, I have noticed as well with the playback window here, it's a little bit choppy now and again, but I think that can be refined over time once LumaTouch start adding updates to the LumaFusion program. But essentially, everything else is pretty much exactly the same, and how you navigate through it and the actual performance of the app is actually really good. Now, I'm conscious I'm telling you everything you need to know right at the top of the video, so I just wanted to get that out of the way, and then I'll just show you a quick tour throughout the app and show you how it performs on this device. Now, up on the top left-hand side of the screen, you've got your library window here. So this is where all of your videos and images will be. Uh, you can click on the media part of the menu tree here, and you can see you've got all of your different, uh, different folders there. Now, what I would suggest is, if you're really into video editing on your phone like I am, I pretty much run my whole YouTube channel from my phone, I would first of all create a folder in your gallery, put all of your videos into there, and then you can easily access them rather than going through your whole camera roll and trying to select through videos in this slightly small window. To do that, create your folder first in your gallery, click on this little flower at the top here, click on My Files, add link to a folder, and then you can go into here and then go into the menu tree where you've got your folder. I've named my Luma Fusion. You click on there, click Use This Folder, Allow, and then you've got much easier access to the videos in that folder. Now, I've just pulled these couple of videos in just for illustration purposes in this particular video. Now, I've done a slightly more mixed version of videos here. So some are recorded on this phone, some on the Pixel 7 Pro, and I've included a HDR clip as well to show you how it behaves in the timeline. Over on this hand side of the screen here, you've got your audio controls. You can click on this icon here, and it'll expand the audio controls. Click on this here, and then you've got some more audio controls as well so obviously you can lock your audio so you basically can't change the volume and you've got another track there as well so it supports up to four tracks on android at the moment but i'm sure that'll be changed as time goes on to get rid of these you simply click on the icons and it all collapses back to where you started on the right hand side in the bottom right hand corner you've got your layout option so you can click through different layouts to suit your preference 
and you can see here there's plenty of options for customization now this particular one here it does look a bit strange on this slightly wider 20 by 9 screen you get on these on pretty much most android phones these days but don't forget you can use the app in portrait mode and this particular layout of the app actually looks really good when you use it that way i prefer this one here it's pretty much ideal and if you've come from a desktop editing program like premiere pro you'll probably feel a little bit more at home with this particular layout that you can see here. Obviously, you've got your playback window here at the top, you've got your play pause controls, and I'll show you how the playback window behaves when you drop something into the timeline. Okay, right, so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to select a clip. So this is actually a HDR clip. Now, this is recorded on the Pixel 7 Pro a couple of weeks back in Cardiff City Centre. So you can see here, as soon as you drop the clip in, you will see that the controls all light up. So you can start using it so you can click on play here and it'll start playing and if you want to see the properties of the clip you click on the eye by here and it will show you the actual properties of the clip so you can see it's recorded on the pixel 29.97 frames per second it's in the h265 rec 2020 format and it's playing at 43.21 megabits per second which is plenty fine for that kind of output file so you just click on that again and then it just collapses that back now you can see here it looks absolutely fine by there if you want to drop it into your timeline you can either just drag from here or you can click on it again and just click on the arrow and it'll drop it straight into your timeline so you can go back and you can see the scrubbing is really fast as well and it's nice and smooth at the same time so when you play back the video the actual playback is really good but i have noticed some things are a little bit choppy from time to time now, if you want to start cutting up the video, you've got your scissors at the bottom here. So you just click on that and it applies a cut to the footage. If you've made a mistake and you think, oh, I didn't want to cut it there, you just simply click the back arrow here and it just undoes your last motion. Now, also at the bottom here, you've got plenty of different options to edit this particular footage. So you've got this edit button here. Now, at the bottom, you've got the framing, you've got the speed, so you can go up to six times speed on this particular one don't really want to do that you've got options for volume mixing you can see here there's loads of options on this right hand side you've got loads of different filters you've got a graphic equalizer that you can use on here as well you can change the master volume of the clip at the same time and then next to that then you've got the color and effects menu now this is pretty handy because if you don't mind your nice hdr clip coming out in standard dynamic range you can apply some editing to it just to tidy up the footage now the HDR footage on the Pixel 7 Pro is actually really good. However, it's not quite ideal. And sometimes I find that the highlights are a little bit clipped out and the shadows as well are slightly noisy. Now you can apply loads of different alterations to the clip as you can see here. And everything is applied in real time when you start moving things around. So you've got the gamma, as you can see here. So if you move it up there, you've got a little bit more impact to the clip. And if we go to the highlights here, I can just trim back the highlights a little bit and you can see everything is changing. Shadows is the same as well, as you can see here. So we're just removing the slight blowout on the clip, as you can see there. And we can add contrast as well, which is probably looking a bit nasty. So basically, you can do pretty much whatever you like with the clips to tune it to your own likeness. Now, what I find with HDR clips is just peg back the brightness just a little bit, just a touch is sometimes all you need, and it makes it look a lot more even, in my opinion. Now, if you want to see before and after with your color alterations, you just simply click this eye icon here, and you can flick through how it looks before and after your edits. There's loads of different presets you can see here, and you can use those as you like to give you the look that's more to your liking. Now, if I want to add a clip on top of this, I can just go into anything that's in my timeline. Now, none of these are actually relevant to me walking around the city, but I just wanted to show you this to illustrate how it works. So you just click on a clip, hold it, and then drag it onto the timeline, and you'll see a little bracket will open up, and you leave go, and then you can see that your clip is now ready. Now, to show you what I was on about with the transitions, if I click on this here, you've got a couple of things that you can add. You've got voiceover, add a clip, transitions and overlay title so if i click on a transition then you can see it's quite short by there it's because i've added it right at the start of that clip so if i just click back i will show you the transitions here so stop by there 
transition and you can see that we only get cross dissolve. Now to choose your transition, you would normally click on this little star here, which looks like a little book with a star on it. You click on that and you can see that there are no different transitions in this particular version of the app. And I'm hoping this will be added in later revisions of Luma Touch on the Android devices. But for now, we just get the cross dissolve and this is how it looks. So you hear the audio ducking as it goes through. Now, as it's highlighted, you can move the effect backwards and forwards. Well, because it's the same clip, it's not going to change anything. So just come out of there and I can just get rid of that as well. Now, if I want to overlay a title, if I just go back to a part of the timeline I want to put a title over, you click here, overlay title, you then click on the title, press the edit button here, which is the little pencil. And if you want to edit the title, click the T at the bottom here, open up this section here, and then you click on this option here, which is the square with a little pen pointing into it. So you click on that, and then you can just name it as you like. So walk in the city click on done and then if you want to change the font you can see here it's a little bit light on fonts at the moment as you can see so i'll just click that one just for the sake of it you can then move the title around so just put it on the bottom here where people can see it and then go back and if i just play back the clip, you can see it'll pop up and as with the transitions you can move your title to make it bigger and make it go longer in the clip. So for example, it'll play for five seconds now over the clip. And then it will go away. And you can see as it goes along the timeline, it will then play the other clip as you can see here. And you can chop and change everything pretty much as you like. So that's a quick walkthrough then of LumaFusion on Android. Just to show you the performance of when it exports videos, you click on the little up icon, the share icon in the bottom right of the screen. You click on movie, and then you can either do it direct to YouTube, so it'll actually encode the video and then upload to YouTube. Fastest way to do it though, is to just click on media and save it to your device. You can see here the resolution is 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. The frame rate is locked because that's all the, that's all the clips are actually at. Uh, you've got your video quality, so you can go all the way up to Ultra, which is 150 megabits per second. It's actually a bit of a waste for these clips because they only top out at 43 megabits anyway. So there's no point taking a higher uh, megabits per second because essentially you're not actually adding any quality. What I would do though, if, is if you're going to upload to YouTube, perhaps choose something a little bit higher, like 75 megabits per second, because once YouTube has had its wicked way with the footage when it's actually uploaded, you're not going to lose so much quality at the end result. Now you've also got options to choose your audio quality, so this actually caps out at 48 kilohertz. And then you've got your video codec, so you can choose between ABC H264 or HEVC H265. The HEVC would obviously save you a bit of space, but you know if you've got a phone with lots of storage, that's not going to be an issue. And you can include video and audio, or you can just include video only if you like to just export without any sound and then we've got your file format which is locked to mpeg4 and at the bottom here then you can see the export duration is three minutes and nine seconds space needed for this export is 1.35 gigabytes so to export it you click the little share icon here next thing you'll see is obviously whatever you want to title your project and at the bottom there it will show you how much storage you've got left on your device so you know if it can be exported successfully and then you just click the share icon again and you will see it will start right in the movie. Now, it's a good thing to mention here that obviously the more that you're putting into the video is going to affect your final export time. So if it's stuff full of transitions, titles, color effects and things like that, it is going to take a little bit longer to export the video. Now, to give some context, uh, if you're going to do it on a PC, Sometimes videos like this can take forever to actually encode, especially if you haven't got a very powerful setup, but most PCs are really powerful rigs and will export videos pretty quickly. 
but for a phone that is exporting really good quality video footage uh, this is actually really quick and you can see here it's doing really good work of actually writing this movie to internal storage ready for sharing later on i think for a first go and for a beta stroke early access i think luma touch have done an excellent job on luma fusion on androids uh, had some slight skepticism that it was not going to be as good but i'm really happy to see that the port has actually gone really well and the execution is pretty much almost flawless even in this early access version now i would like to see those other things added later on things like hdr support is really cool because most phones now allow you to record hdr video and it would be nice to be able to edit it on the go if you need to at the moment with android because there's no other app that actually supports hdr editing you have to just be very careful with the clip that you want to record make sure there's nothing you need to cut out record it and then you just need to upload it directly to youtube from your device and then let youtube handle all the encoding at their end but it would be nice if you would be able to actually edit on the device and chop up as you like so there you can see the file is all being exported and that's ready to share if i want to from my gallery straight to youtube or share with someone else and you can see it's made pretty short work of that particular clip even with those little additions that i've done so there is luma fusion for android if you've got any comments or questions about anything you've seen in the video please let me know down in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as possible and please don't forget if you're new around here then please do consider subscribing so you don't miss more videos coming like this on the channel very very soon but for now this has been my look at luma fusion on android my name is dave west and i will catch you guys later